This week on Three Sides of the Coin, what are we going to talk about, guys? The poop hit the fan. And the pillow. Amazing shocker. Amazing shocker. And, and Skype. Yeah. Pretty much nothing. We talk about nothing. It's a show about nothing. It's our <laughs> Seinfeld episode. Welcome to Three Sides of the Coin. Hola. Hola. We're going to try something a little different. We just hit the record button immediately upon the three of us connecting on Skype. Mm -hmm. Which took forever to connect on Skype, by the way. Yeah, Skype was being a piece of shit today. 25 oh. minutes. Watch, 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 yeah, 25 minutes, huh? Watch, watch my language. We had somebody saying we should try not to swear as much because his kids are watching the show with him. All right. Fair. So, stacking like a piece of poop. Yeah. Po poopy software, poopy. Anyway, we're just going to let you deal with everything we go through up front, and either it's going to be a complete train wreck from the beginning as we try and get our acts together and, re and group up and figure out topics and all that, or it'll be very cool. Who knows what we're going to record. So, anyway, um, what are we going to talk about today, guys? Well, how about this? Know. Look at this. It's the it's the uh, Paul Stanley book. Oh, I'm so, same cover. I made a mistake. It's bound to happen. All right. Well, all right. So here, seriously, I'm not, I'd be more than happy to talk about that. I yeah. think the cover. I think the cover of Paul's book is great, and I don't know what anybody else would have expected. He's Paul Stanley of Kiss. Yeah. He's not going to put a picture of him out of makeup. It's not going to happen. Nope. Makeup is what sells. So, what what better cover than a nice, big, perfect photo of him in makeup? I mean, sure, I think all of us as fans would totally think it's cool. I, somebody did a mock-up of, like, that 15-year-old photo of when he was 15 years old. It looks great. You and I know who that is. You put oh, that no, no, in, no, no, no. Yeah, you can't you go put, that you, far back. You, you put that on the bookshelf of any bookstore that's left, and the average person walking by is go, I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, you swore. But, uh, no, 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 I, I, I agree. Um, uh, you know, that, that, that was just a little joke there with the Peter cover. I mean, they do look alike, but yeah, I mean, you need a, you need a picture yeah, of Paul. Maybe something I mean, from 1976 or something, you know, more classic. But either way, it had to be Paul on the cover in makeup, yeah, period. It's got to be Paul in the cover face. Nobody's going to really care about the full body costumes, all that. It's the face. That's what's going to sell it. Right, and it, yeah, yeah, agreed. That's it. That's it. But it is amazing that sort of everybody has put out a book and it's all been the same concept, with perhaps the exception of Ace, where it was him sort of slouched in the back of a car, but... Yeah, but I mean, honestly, how could there be any other concept? Oh, no. you've, got f you've got four guys who are known for wearing makeup, and that's what sells... In fact, I, I would say you've got four makeups that are known. I, I don't even know if the people know the, the yeah, you know the the fans out there know the. I mean, the I think I think it makes it very easy for doing a cover. You don't really need to think and get too creative on it. It's like, all right, let's find a good picture of your face and makeup and let's put it on. Done. I, I gotta say, I'm getting real excited for Paul's books based solely on his tweets because he's been. Sort of brutally honest and even brutal with fans, fans that some of them deserve it. So I'm wondering if that will carry into the book that kind of brutal honesty where he's going to call losers losers and bad bad. It, it just and seems, winners winners. Yeah, it just seems as though he's he's just laying it all out of the line and doesn't care. And that to me is the book I want to read. So we'll see. We'll see. So um, other. Kiss news this week. I, you know, let's let's talk about happenings. Yeah, we so got to talk we, about the NHL. We had the NHL. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! Did that start a poop storm amongst fans? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen. The uh, 
it, 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 it appeared as though they played to a backing track in terms of background vocals and stuff. It seemed as though Gene sung rock and roll all night and Paul sung Detroit Rock City, but everything else, or maybe not musically, but the backing vocals might have been piped in. I don't know. I wasn't there. Perhaps the... Um, well, didn't didn't um, the NHL tell you it was not... Yeah, yeah. They said it was a tape delay, first of all. Yeah, it's funny. I... Um, one of the guys from uh, the Killer Dwarfs tweeted to me about it and then had included the L.A. Kings in on that tweet. And the L.A. Kings official twit, tweeter, <laughs> twit, Twitter responded, no, there was an audio video delay. Which, you know, in a live broadcast with satellites and all that wonderful stuff, a, a one to two second delay can happen. And sometimes the audio will get ahead of the video. So, yeah, it could have been well, a delay. I, I think most of the time now... Um, those delays happen for one big reason, so they can stop and catch an f bomb right. being dropped or a wardrobe malfunction. Right. That's it. They want enough time to to bleep it out. Yeah. But so, you know, I, I was I, torn I, with the performance. The fact that Kiss was representing at the NHL was very cool. They were at Dodger Stadium, which was very cool. That said, I really haven't heard Detroit Rock City sung like that before. It was very different. It was very slow. It was plodding. And it was trying to cover up certain things. Come on, say it. I ain't going to say it. Does it? It was covering up. It was covering up. Covering up Paul's vocals. Yeah. It was. Um, well, Tommy, what'd you, did you watch it, Tommy? Uh, I didn't see it live, oh, but not I a saw... real fan. <laughs> no, I'm not. What's your point? I've been told that I'm not, so all right, I'll just roll with that. I saw parts of it um, on YouTube. What'd you yeah. think? It was okay. I mean, I you know, I that knowing that they're going to be on television, three D, three D. Yeah, were they in three D? No, they weren't. No, we are. Okay. We are. <laughs> having them having knowing that they're going to be on TV is never going to hold the same amount of uh, expectation and excitement for me than when I knew they were going to be on the Paul Lynn special. Right, but but you're not so, 14 anymore. Yeah, you're all No, no, I understand that. But so I mean, yeah. that's just kind of how I I look at it. It's just like it's just another performance. It it wasn't good, it wasn't bad. It just yeah. Uh, you know, I thought it looked freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the fact that they were outside and could pyro up to the sky was fantastic. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I made a post on Facebook. I was watching it on my 55-inch HD TV. It looked amazing watching them that large in HD. Yep. The, great, the great camera angles and everything else right. that they were getting. Oh, production-wise, was very slick. Looked beautiful. I had no expectations about the vocals because I've been honest about what I think about the vocals for mm -hmm. the last couple of years. So I had no, it, was, it wasn't like, oh my God, I just realized he had problems. No, it, it is what it is. Um, I did notice that Detroit Rock City felt very plotting and is like, oh, uh, okay. But it's a live network broadcast and I think the first thing, for God's sake, what's going on with call recorder right now? Warning, this Mac is not running fast enough to record the video from this call. Well, I've got it recording on my side. All right, so Mitch, keep recording. And Tommy's uh, recording I, his too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, it's, it, it was, it's, not a, it's not a live concert. No. It's a TV appearance, and there's a big difference. When you do a two-song, three-song TV appearance... Well, apparently they did four. I, I know they did I Love It Loud. I saw them <sighs> in the background while... Uh, what the... F I don't know what else they did. Apparently they did, before Rock and Roll All Night, they did Lick It Up into Rock and Roll All Night into I Love It Loud into Detroit. That's what okay. I was told. Like, what, whatever. I mean... Song selection, we could go back and forth until... Oh, no, 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 listen. Those are the songs you but, have to play on a network broadcast. You don't pick, bring out charisma on the NHL broadcast. I, I guess my, my point was, it's not a rock... It's not a KISS concert no. for an hour and a half. So you get... It's, it's different productions. It's different... They're doing it for a different reason. So 
it didn't bother me one bit that there would have been backing vocals. It wouldn't have bothered me one bit if it was lip synced because look, that's not uncommon at all to have any sort of network performance to be lip synced, background vocals. You, you know, they it's it's just not a real show. It's look it's it's all about looking good. It's not about the bombastic being in an arena filled with it. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it's sort of like having Kiss on Solid Gold, if you remember that. Show. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. You know, I hate Solid Gold, but it was cool to watch them on there, and I didn't give a fine crap that it was a lip sync performance. No, but and we should focus on the positive. I mean, listen, we're we're turning into this stadium game that has fifty five thousand people broadcast across Canada and across the states, so basically North America. And it's KISS. It wasn't Metallica. It wasn't Madonna. It wasn't Britney Spears. It was KISS. And that's kind of cool. With all the choices they had out there, uh, they got KISS. Uh, well, that's exactly how I looked at it. It was just like, listen, it looks freaking cool to see KISS mm -hmm. in Dodger Stadium mm -hmm. on a national broadcast like that. On a Saturday when people could actually be Saturday, home to watch. It looked freaking amazing. Are there vocal issues? God, yes. And it's nothing new. And it's not, I, I don't know, it's just not something that's like, let's keep beating ourselves up about it. If you don't like it, do something. If you do like it, enjoy it. It's not the end of the world. Right. right. There was one comment I found on our Facebook that I thought was interesting. Somebody, or maybe it was on my page, somebody had mentioned, oh, they should have had Ace and Peter there. And I'm like, well, if it wasn't vocally up to par with Tommy and Eric... How much better would it have been with Peter and Air, you know, Peter and and Tommy? I mean, you wouldn't you would have then Nate. had a, a drummer who can't drum, and, and then somebody who can't sing. <laughs> it would have but, been worse. But no, you know, not 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 even getting into to the the playing ability. Let's be honest: the people watching NHL would do they really give a rat's ass that it would have been Ace and Peter there? No, no. It wouldn't have made one difference. No. It, it would have mattered to, to a small minority of KISS fans. And yes, it is a small minority. It's not the majority of KISS fans. But to the nationwide audience watching that, they didn't care one bit. Yeah, and you just have to look at the coverage that was on ESPN and NBC Sports. They talked about KISS the band. They didn't talk about what members i mean it, it it's about the whole package it's not about these four individuals so now one of the things i thought was kind of cool gene was using a new um axe base yeah that was that? that was really interesting it was this sort of all silver base like a chrome base i guess it's a new manufacturer yeah um but i liked it a lot better than the airbrushed bases he'd been using for the last year or two mm -hmm. the the airbrushing was great artwork mm -hmm. but it just didn't fit well with his costume it was sort of like you know he's black and silver and then all of a sudden you've got all this intricate coloring and shading and detail going on in his axe and it it almost took away from him yeah. so I, I i loved how this new chrome axe really kind of just fit right in with his costume yeah as good. long as the neck doesn't bend i'm fine with it yeah, it looked it looked really slick. Now, what about Eric Carr? And uh, Eric, Carr, boy, I'm in I'm in other states today. Eric Singer's drums. He had the the flashing logo within the drum heads. I like that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, did he do that on the Monster Tour? Because if he did, I completely missed it. Yes, I I think he has did done he? that before. Because it looks fantastic. I, I think when I've seen it before in a concert, I I kind of passed it off as lights, the lighting effect on a foil logo. Right. But it's not a foil logo. No, it's no, no. actually LEDs. It's a mini mm. LED KISS logo built right into his uh, his drum kit. Yeah, and if it's new, then, you know, props for him because that was, that was killer. That I really enjoyed that's quite a, a cool bit. Little, that's a cool little effect when you can't have a big logo behind you. You put a mini logo. Yep. little mini logo. Yeah, no, that was great. There's also one thing I want to talk to you about, Michael, about a picture you posted, if we can get to that at some point. Okay. Well, you posted a picture of Kiss watching a Kiss oh, band yeah. in Hamilton, and some of the comments were, oh, how lame of them to watch, and it just struck me that 
some people don't understand, you know, the the process of making a movie. You 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 have the tribute band up there with the white makeup and all that, so that you can see the reflection from the lights, and so that you can judge camera angles, you can judge lighting, you can judge. It's it's not about putting a fake band up there and just being. It, fa- it, I mean, it's it, 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 it's beyond it, me. It, it, it's not about this being lazy and not wanting to do it. No. Not at it, all. it was. I don't remember what time I got there for that filming. I mean, the the audience got let in sometime in the middle of the afternoon, and still had to wait around for like five hours at least for the filming. Early morning, this was already going on. Yeah. So when I got there, you know, the band was in makeup, but they had the, the I think it was hotter than hell was the tribute band. Right. Was up there. And again, it was for making sure the the angles looked good, the lighting looked good, right. the effects looked good. It, and and it's not uncommon for any movie, right? Not just Kiss, any movie to have somebody else stand in for the lead actor because you don't want to have the lead actor there for twelve hours just standing in a spot as spotlights are moved around and doing it over and over again. You just need somebody who's physically the same size. And yeah. in the case of Kiss, wearing the makeup, the same reflections, the same guitars, all that, that's all it was. It, you're, you're right. I, I started to see those posts, and it's just like, I just was like, here we go again. Some fans who don't understand, don't understand, and don't want to understand, and are just going to mouth off like they are experts. Yeah. And, you know, and... You know, a couple of fans said, oh, we lecture, we lecture. It's not about lecturing. It just That just struck me as uh, you, you just don't understand what's going on. You can't have your main actor, uh, he's there to deliver a performance. And if he's been standing there 12 hours and he's half asleep by the time it's time to deliver the performance, you're going to get shitty movies. And that applies to Tom Cruise, Tom Selleck, uh, you, you know. Uh, it doesn't apply to Mitch Lafon. We make Mitch Lafon stand in for his own shots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've been here since we, uh, 10 this morning. Yeah, we do have to look at Mitch through this whole thing. I'm not quite sure if we could find anybody who'd want to stand in for Mitch. Maybe a hockey Can't puck. Hockey puck. Well, and I think it's also the way the message is delivered before they can accuse you of lecturing them because you're not lecturing. Like you said, Mitch, you're explaining. Right. Try, try a different tactic. Say, well, you know, that looks unusual to me. Why are they doing that? Rather than everyone just always jumps the gun and says, this is dumb or that sucks. How, or how they're lazy of the band. It's like, yeah. And then I read one on the Facebook that said, oh, look, Peter Chris's name is shaded out. And it's like, Really? Are we into conspiracy theories now that Michael shaded out Peter's? I mean, <sighs> nonsense. But anyway, no. Uh, but and I'll add, as a fan, it's great that you've started posting those kind of pictures because mm-hmm. we know you were there. You were. We know that you were taking pictures for for Kiss Online at the time, and it's nice to see the vault door opening because you're now not the only one who has gets to see these things. Yeah, I I don't have copies of every photo I took. Right. I wish I did. I mean, I took, you know, at, at any given concert, I would probably take a thousand photos at a concert, and mm-hmm. I don't have them for every concert. But what I do have, what I did find, I'm just going to start going through and finding some of the cooler stuff like like that. I just thought that was kind of, you know, it was it, it really was served no other purpose than, isn't it kind of interesting? It's Kiss watching Kiss on stage. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a great picture. By the way, but you uh, know, not for one second did I think anything of it. I was going to ask you about it, but I just thought, hmm, that's kind of a cool photo. But I didn't think, well, you know, they're lazy or what are they doing? I but there's nothing I don't to think understand. of it. It's they're, they're standing in preparing a shot. You you prep a shot. Like yeah, you, I mean, I I guess I, you know, I would think the discussion would end when somebody says, "Well, here's why that's happening." Oh, okay, thank you very much. End of discussion. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, no, they're still lazy. I still think it's stupid. It's, it's. Just, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't get that. No. God, whatever. At at that, that was in Hamilton, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you you said that the band or or hotter than hell, the tribute band showed up probably at ten in the morning or whatever. 
at any point did Kiss do a whole concert or did they entertain the fans? Did they go meet them in the lobby or was it sort of fans over there and Kiss over here? What, was there any interaction, any, any signing of guitars? I, I, any... I, no, I think the only interaction is once the crowd was let in and Kiss was on stage, between takes, they would every once in a while reach down to the people in the front row or off to the side of the stage and sign a few things, but they didn't go out and talk to people or meet people. I mean, because okay. you, you basically had a coliseum that was probably filled with 5,000 fans. Right. That's, oh. that's a cop's coliseum, I would yeah. imagine, in Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was... It well, was, was there a mini concert after? It? Was there a 45-minute no. set? No. Okay. No, no. You, I mean, uh, it, it, it was a typical movie of hurry up and wait, which I'm sure was frustrating to a lot of fans because they'd never experienced it before. But if you've ever been on any sort of TV or movie set, there's a lot more waiting than there is actually doing. And by the way, that's concerts, too. As you know, listen, uh, I show up at shows sometimes at 2 in the afternoon, oh, and yeah. the band doesn't go on till 9 or 10, and it's, it's, you, you stand there and wait. Listen, I'm going to go work the Killer Dwarves on Friday. I'm there at 4. Their set time's at 10. So we're going to be at the hotel, we're going to go supper. There's just a lot but, of but, but, doing but you nothing. Know, but in, in that case, it's not the entire show's audience dealing with that. Right. So like at this filming, it was 5,000 fans who showed up, they're in their seats, they're all excited, and then they're sitting around waiting for a half hour. What are they waiting for? Just like the band is up there waiting, they're waiting for a camera to get moved, lighting to be changed, mm -hmm. the director to decide on something. Then they film something for two minutes, they stop, they look at it, they go back and do it again and try a different angle. You know, filming, the movies, filming movies and TV shows is, is all about that. So, you know, it wasn't like you show up and boom, they just hit the play button, film a live show, and then they're done. They do it over and over again. They retake it, different lighting, different angles. Um... Sometimes some bands, when all is said and done, would put on like a four-song, five-song mini right. concert. But this wasn't the this, case. This wasn't the case. This was, I can't remember what time we got out of there, but it was literally an all morning, afternoon, evening affair. Yeah. It, 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 was, it, was, it was cool to watch this whole thing go on. Oh, I'm sure. I think the stuff you've been putting up has been great yeah. Now, the, the pictures that you took, you said a thousand per show. Uh, the ones that you don't have, did you simply delete them, or did the band just take possession immediately of all the different... Well, no. I mean, every, everything the band had... And everything you took. Every, every, everything I took, including the stuff I'm posting now, was at, was at one time posted on KISS Online. But at some point, I don't know why, around 2006 or so, they launched a new version of the site and they like deleted everything. Everything going back. Video clips, audio files, photos, all that stuff. This is just a few things that I found that I still had copies on my computer. Okay. So, you know. Did that get you sued? I'm the photographer. Okay. But not a work for hire? I, w I was never hired by KISS. Oh, okay. So there you go. But never an employee of KISS. Okay. Fair enough. That, that's, that's funny. I mean, that, 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 that goes back to everybody's like, you, you're, you've always been an employee of Gene and Paul. I've never worked for Gene and Paul. Right. You worked for Sony Signatures, which for was... Sony Signatures, which was a company that had hundreds of clients. Right. From all over, every artist, country. And yeah. I was never an employee of Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley or Kiss. Did Sony ever have you work on any other, but anybody else's site for, for, at that time? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've worked on, besides Kiss, I've worked on Motley Crue and Ozzy Osbourne and Meatloaf and Rod Stewart, Fleetwood Mac and Britney Spears and Madonna and okay. U2. And so, yeah, I've worked on all sorts of them. Nobody was I as deeply involved with as it was with KISS. Yes. That's and the one thing that's par interesting. Partially because nobody else really was quite as open as KISS. I mean, KISS basically said, do whatever you want with the website. 
it's it's yours. Just make it cool. Make the fans happy, happy. Give them what they want. All these other artists were just like, oh my god, the control and the access, and you know, it's just uh, nightmares for so many of them. Yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. another thing you have to appreciate with Gene and Paul. They do take an interest in what's being put out there, and. You know, when you were doing the Ask Paul questions and all that, I mean, you're having contact with the artist, sort of directing what's going on and, and trying to make it cool for the fans. I mean, they, they were probably the only artist that we had direct contact with the artist. Right. Everybody else, you never dealt with the artist. You always dealt with managers, assistants whoever the go-between was and then they would turn around and ask the artists so you know to this if day they even you, bothered to ask the artist you, yeah if they bought listen i won't name the artist we built a website for an artist who was going on tour we sent everything over all the designs the mock-ups the directions to management said all right we need to get approval as if we're going to have this launched and live when the press conference announcing the tour happens we need approvals now so we can get it ready. Yes, it's approved. Okay, we built it, we launched it, we got it live. The day the press conference happens, the artist looks at the website, freaks out and goes, I hate this. I've never saw this. Take it down. And we're like, uh, hey, manager, seems to me they never saw this. So who approved this? We'll take it down and we'll redo it, but... Um, you know, you were supposed to get approval. To, 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 this, to this day, Gene and Paul are intimately involved in all this stuff. I mean, that's just, I think that's one of their best traits is that they just, they don't have to be, they want to be. Well, I think that's also why we're celebrating a 40th year, because they've cared for 40 years. They haven't let sort of lawyers and business managers and managers run Kiss Inc. They've been hands on. Yeah. And I think most of the successful bands have the same story. You look at John Bon Jovi, he's hands on. You look at the Stones, Mick Jagger's, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So, one thing I wanted to ask you guys is with this being 2014, 40th anniversary, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Don't. Oh, wait. Do, do you think this could be the most. I don't know if controversial is right, but the 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 year we have more, I don't know, I guess I'll go with that. More controversy amongst KISS fans this year than ever before. Well, I think a lot of it's going to depend on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think if they go up there and for whatever reason Ace and Peter don't show up, or if Bruce shows up, but they just leave him in the audience, I think whatever happens at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is sort of going to set a tone for the complaining or lack of complaining thereof. Well, I, I, that's, I think, that's where I see it starts. I think that is just one major piece, but I got thinking of this after all of the bitching and complaining about the NHL performance, mm -hmm. and I'm like, huh, oh, we've got a 40th anniversary tour, that may or may not be cool. By the way. May not be involved with it. One last thing on that NHL. I mean, if you thought the NHL was bad, go look at Metallica on the Grammys. I mean, that was just god-awful. So give Kiss props. At least Kiss looked cool. Metallica on the Grammys looked horrible, sounded horrible, and that pianist should have been locked in a trunk somewhere and thrown in the river. I mean, it was horrible all through. So Kiss still wins again go ahead but so you've got that you've got the movie you wanted the best you got the best we already know mitch's early feelings yeah really has he talked about that it's got a great poster with a ring of fire but i mean even going beyond that when that movie comes out you just know there's going whether it was done right or wrong it's probably going to divide fans yes. one way or another. Yeah, jokes about the poster aside, you're going to get people that are going to think it's great, and you're going to get some that are going to say, oh, it's Gene and Paul's story, they, they bitched this, they bitched that, it's not... Yeah, that's, 
You've got Paul's book coming out this year. Yeah, all got, magnets for criticism. You, you, you've got that. That, that was my. I, that's a good way. Magnets for criticism. So you know, back in '96, you had the reunion and putting the makeup on. Mm -hmm. Sort of just one event. There were some people who didn't like that, mm -hmm. but you had one event. This year, you've got all of these pretty big events all happening within one year. And who God knows what we don't know about. There's yeah. always going to be something that we don't know about. Yeah, and, and again, I'll, I'll go right back to the Hall of Fame. If they get up there and they play with Ace and Peter and then there's no reunion tour, it's going to be bitch and moan all the way through. And if they get up there and they don't play with Ace and Peter, it's going to be bitching all the way through. So that's, that's sort of the epicenter of all the future bitching that's going to come through the rest well, of the year. Well, I, I, think, I think that is the... the mountaintop of the bitching for this year yep and then paul's book comes out paul's book uh, what does he say or what does, does book it come say? out just before or just after what's the actual date on that it's april i don't know i would imagine it's coming out because right hall of fame is april 10th and the book is april uh, you know what let me just check it online but yeah it's it's all bunched together so i mean do you guys think this could be the most controversial year for KISS, amongst KISS fans. The general public could give a crap about any of this. Yeah, I think so. It, because there's so many things happening and there's so many disgruntled employees and there's so many unhappy people that I think no matter what happens and what Paul says in his book and, and how the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame transpires, people are going to be unhappy. No matter what happens, people will be unhappy. That was the thing for me, you know, because I've heard, and this may not be accurate, that one of the reasons they're doing this movie is they're trying to do it similar to what the Eagles did with their film. But the difference is, is that the Eagles fans, and I know there's a lot of, I'm sure, hardcore fans, I've never been any, I've never seen any band with fans like the Kiss fans. And so I don't know if people were even aware that the Eagles thing was being put together. And it was just like a pleasant surprise that popped up on um, Showtime that you kind of heard about. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. I almost wonder if the expectations are going to be so great for the film that no matter how Alan puts it together, good or bad, it's never going to make people happy. I think you, you hit the nail on the head with the word expectations. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think fans have... I mean, listen, NHL, I think fans had expectations that that was going to be a 90-minute KISS concert. Yeah, which, which I, I got that feeling that fans expected that, but that's such a ridiculous really? expectation. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got that. I, I, it seemed that way. Some, some people were like, this isn't a concert. They only did two songs on TV. I think it's that expectation. People, build, people make this up in their head, and when it isn't what they made up, they get pissed. But when you lump all the footage together, would you say it's a fair statement to say that Kiss spent as much time in front of the camera on the uh, NHL game as the halftime does halftime performers at the Super Bowl? Sure. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's equal billing. I, I I never thought for one minute that they are going to play a full show on NBC. I mean, that's not what NBC Sports is all about. They're going to cover the hockey game, and here's you know here's some you know entertainment for you, but they're not going to broadcast a live show. I mean not not talking about vocals i mean some fans were like that was a boring performance to watch and i was just like what was boring about that i don't know i mean i don't I, know what I, they were expecting I, I, yeah um, that, that's it expectations get built up i'll that. answer that on one thing i don't think kiss's performance was boring in terms of the fireworks and all that i think the way nbc and cbc in canada split up the camera angles the shots were too quick I think it was more of a production from the TV perspective that made it sort of like, that's not how you present KISS. And I don't think NBC Sports or CBC Sports, for Canadians, understood how to present a KISS show. It was a lot of strange, fast cuts, and towards the end they had a, 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 you know, a shot from a blimp or whatever, and it's like, well, no, you don't want to watch KISS from a blimp. That's not how you watch a KISS show. You have to be, you know, face on. And... But I thought that was actually a cool shot. I was like, wow, you know, you don't really ever get to see the full KISS-type stage from above. 
as it's mm. happening. Okay, fair enough, but I still think overall, over that five-minute period, they didn't present Kiss in a sort of rock and roll filming kind of way. It was more done like a, as, as they were just filming a hockey game, and, and it was fast cuts, and it, it, it didn't work. I just, I think, I, I think back to Tommy's point, some fans build up so much expectation about whatever's going to happen, that Paul's book is going to re- reveal this. This is going to happen at the Hall of Fame. The 40th anniversary tour is going to do this. And when it doesn't happen, then they don't look at what ends up happening. They just are pissed and angry and upset, and it doesn't work, and it's terrible. And it's just like you're, you're not enjoying anything because your fantasy expectation never happened. And see, and to me, that's the difference for myself versus you know many people. And I'm not the only one, so I'm not saying that. But I am still, I still consider myself a big fan. But I have absolutely no expectations at all, one way or the other. Because then I'm never disappointed. I can take it or leave it as I choose. But I, I don't. It, it's not like I, I wait with anticipation for a year for the new record to come out. It's just when it comes out, I go to the store, I buy it, I listen to it. If I like it, great. If I don't, that's okay, too. The only expectation I have is that if I hear that they're going to do a full tour coming up this year, I expect them to come to Minneapolis. Right. You know, that's about it. Uh, you know, and so for me, I think it's great that they got the national exposure. I think the whole thing overall was was fantastic in that respect. But I'm indifferent to the whole thing if I had not watched it. You know, I think there's just going to be a lot of disappointment this year. Yeah. For, well, for, and that's for some well, fans. There's just going to be huge amounts of disappointment. Totally, and that's why I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. They did everything I wish they would have done, which is they got back together in 96, and they toured as the original four. The other piece of it that they did back in 89 with the Hot in the Shade tour is they started to play some of the old stuff. Other than that, I'm happy with what they've done, and you know I can take it or leave it. And listen, I've been very vocal about Paul's vocal problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, his I book is I, April 22nd. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't have high expectations. I, st- I I love that NHL performance. I loved it. I thought it was great. I, you know, I'm jumping around in front of the TV holding the baby and she's screaming and, you know, yelling and I'm like, it's like, it was fun. That was it. Yeah. It was fun. So, you know, you can you cannot like certain things and still enjoy this. Is what it comes down to, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I would agree with that. Listen, I, is 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 it if if the Hall of Fame happens and Bruce Kulick doesn't get a shout out, is that disappointing? Yes. Does that mean the whole thing sucks? No. And whatever happens that night can't be enjoyed. No. But you know, if Bruce gets a shout out and Vinny doesn't, there's going to be people complaining. Right? It's 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 got to be tough to be in a band like Kiss or any band. You're you're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't. I don't know if it's tough for the band. No, I, I, I don't think. I I, I I actually think the band has they don't even pay attention to this. I think it's got to be tough to be that fan who thinks that way and feels that way. Well, you know, and and speaking of that, like if you're talking about recording songs, for instance. I was talking to Jack Douglas when he was here in town recording the Odd Fathers CD, and one of the things he said to me about the bands from the '70s, because I asked him point blank, you know, you, you obviously have the the technological skills, you're a great producer, you've been doing it forever. Why can't you go into the studio and record an album with whomever and give get something out of them like you did in the '70s? And he said it's simply impossible because as you age and you change, they don't have the same youthful yep. um, view of things and ability that they had at that point, you know. And that kind of, to me, is it was a defining statement on the career of any band. And so things are going to change, and, and you either have to change with them and enjoy them, or you jump off the ship and you go elsewhere. That's why I always think it's so funny when these people get on, 
and bitch and complain about this, that, and the other thing. It's like, well, then if you hate it so much, why are you here? Why are you listening? Why are you still following the band? Uh, yep. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, that, that, that does baffle me. If you hate everything they do, then why are, why are you a fan? I mean, mm-hmm. you know... I, I, think that, I think to some extent it's they want other people to feel like they do so they don't feel, I don't know, alone, that, that other people will agree with them. You know, they, they, they want to bring other people's happiness down. Well, and even if I agree with some of what they say... It doesn't have to take over my life, right. you know. I, it, look, Ace or take and over Peter, my Facebook page. Well, that's all. yeah, but you kind of invite that to a certain degree. No, I you post know, stuff that is posts. meant to have discussion. No, but when he, you've he, made your point once, you don't need to make it eighty-seven other times. I, 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 I don't. Think, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think Mitch invites it. I think it's it's the same thing we deal with on our page you know don't go off topic I mean, jesus christ i've seen some of mitch's where it's like all of a sudden you know the to- the topic was um lip syncing and the discussion ends up about taking guitar lessons from mark st john yeah i'm like yeah. what what you know <laughs> no i'm not saying that mitch invites that just the fact that he is so active you're going to get more of that because you're more engaged I think, well, than, I, I than, mean, I do, at least I than I am. To, I do try to post things that I think people will find interesting, but at the same time, do. at the same time, if you've made your point, you don't need to make your Move point on. eighty-seven times. You know, right. you know, yes is yes, and no is no, and we don't need to have it eight, anyway. But that's a whole other discussion. No, I agree with I agree with you. Yeah, Mitch, I agree with Mitch, you. Mitch is Mitch is going to be pulling the whip out in the future here, people. Well, we'll see. But I mean, listen, today I just posted some Motley Crue tour dates, and I'm sure by the time I'm finished with this call and I go back and look in an hour, somewhere, somewhere along the line it's going to be Tommy Thayer sucks. And it's going to be like, what? It's, it's Motley Crue dates. But that's how it always seems to end up on my page. You know? <laughs> no, you know, I've gotten that and Tommy too, does but, not suck, by the way. But, but <laughs> what, what I told you is it's, it's time to just put the hammer down. Just delete those posts. Yeah. I know, but I'll... I mean, they, you know, hey, it's your wall. It's your wall. I know. You know, I, it, I, it, I, it, I it, sometimes it's... delete stuff sort of stealth, but there's other times, like for on, on Sunday, my phone had died, and then I was watching hockey or football or whatever the hell I was watching, and by the time my phone was recharged and I got back to it, I was up to 120-something Facebook notification. It's like, I ain't reading all of these, so mm-hmm. they'll just stay there, but enough's enough. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just grateful that the band that I like is still around. So to me, I look at anything they do as a gift. Now, I can take it or leave it if I choose, depending on what it is that they do. But I can tell you right now, without even reading Paul's book, it's going to be better than most, if not the best, just because he seems to be the most level-headed of the four of them. So I know it's going to be a great read. And, and I think and his if agenda they put out, is different, too. Gene's agenda well was, to, was to, to, to sell Gene's ego and, and stroke his ego. Peter's agenda was to bitch and moan. I, I don't know what Ace's agenda was, and I, I don't think to he collect knows. An ad, to collect an <laughs> advance check from a publisher. Yeah, and, and, and I think Paul's agenda is to tell a straightforward, honest story, or as, as honest as he can be, because, you know, they, mm-hmm. they, they do have to worry but, about being sued all the time. Right, but I, I view I view the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing the same way. I, they're going to do what they want to do, and either I'll like it or I won't. But what do you do? They're not calling me up and asking me what I think. Yeah, again, I have no expectations. If they show up with Tommy and Eric and show and play without makeup, I'm good. If they show up with Ace and Peter and play in makeup, I'm good. You know, whatever it is. And if Vinnie Vincent shows up. You know what? Good for them. I, I wouldn't bet on that, but if Vinny comes in and plays Lick It Up and they all jam with Bruce and stuff, God bless them. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. So today... Any chance Vinny would show up, by the way? Do you think that they would, just for one... You, I doubt yeah. it. I mean, who knows? I doubt it, though. He's busy printing t-shirts. 
But you don't think just what, for the one cool factor? Yeah, one t-shirt now. You don't think Gene and Paul would put away something just for that one show and say, come and jam? No, huh? No, because... Well, that I don't know, but... I, again, I think the majority of the people are going to be like, we don't care if Finney's there or not. True. True. I'm more intrigued with the whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction to see who else is going to be there that will be involved in the festivities. So what I was saying then is, is I'm more interested to see who the contemporaries are that will show up. You know, I, I want Ace and Peter to be there and play, obviously, but to me, the icing on the cake would be to have the four of them play and then have them do a song with Paul McCartney. See, I, I hope it's somebody not obvious. Meaning, well, Paul McCartney's not obvious. No, 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 no. You're, you're yeah. wrong. All, what I, what I was going to say is, Paul McCartney's not an obvious show up and play with Kiss. Dave no. Grohl would be obvious. Lenny Kravitz yeah. would be obvious. Garth, Garth Brooks. Brooks would be obvious. Not that they wouldn't be cool. It's just that wouldn't be the. <sighs> no. Mm -hmm. But because you know, it's New Jersey, maybe Bon Jovi showing up would be cool. John, I should say, not the whole. I don't. Thing. I don't know if that would even be cool. No, Keith Richards playing rock and roll night with him. Keith, two thousand man. Two thousand man. Now, the, yeah. See, that would be amazing. Be cool. Or um, Ozzy. Yeah, Ozzy would be cool. I'm just, you know, there, there's a lot of people. Um, what Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. That wouldn't be cool. I, okay, that'd be fun to watch, but he's done stuff. He's, you know, Pearl Jam. We know they're they, they're big kids. I want somebody that I would go. Wow, I didn't expect that to happen. Tom Jones, no. Yeah. Ingle Bert Humperdinck. Yeah, I was just about to say that. He, Gene, Gene and him have a duet coming out in a couple of months. Bob Dylan. Oh no, mm -hmm. Bob Dylan's never cool. No. Ooh. I don't. It may not sound cool. But it would be a cool rock and roll moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the point. See and, them and play some, with people some, they wouldn't. Yeah, somebody that nobody would go. What the hell are they doing with Kiss? But, yeah, but you know, having said that's that, that's what I want. I just watched the Grammys, and don't ask me why. But some of those duets are—they just don't work. I mean, just let Kiss play with Kiss. You know, Metallica playing alone would have been good, and and yeah, but that's not too much and nonsense. I get, and I, I don't disagree with you in that, Mitch, but I guess my point is more the jam at the end. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you okay. know, where they the all jam at the end. Uh, Anton Fig, Paul Schaefer, <laughs> all the guys are on the solo albums. Will Lee, you got the David Letterman band to get out there. No, I'd like to see Springsteen. They could do an, an unmasked band. song. <laughs> yeah. Keith Richards and, you know. All of those kind of guys. Yeah, but some I, of those I, people I, don't want to be seen with Kiss. I mean, the people that want to be seen with Kiss are Anthrax, uh, like you said, Lenny Kravitz, uh, Dave, Dave Grohl. Those are the guys that want to be but seen. But that's with all Kiss. the more point to that, this. That is the point. This is this is a complete wish. I yeah. I, I know, listen, it, it's not going to happen. You're not no. going to get Keith Rick. It's not. But the point is, if you were to pick somebody really cool that you would want to come out, that's what I want to see. I don't because want. I don't want to see Anthrax or Bon Jovi jam with Kiss. I don't want to see Poison. I don't want to see any of that shit. Right, because they Those look kind of up to, to Kiss, whereas Kiss looks up to the Rolling Stones and the Beatles about and Cream and whomever. Robert Plant and Paul Stanley. Yeah, Jimmy Page. That would be cool. Yeah. You know, that again, unexpected. Were you there, Mike, when Joe Perry of Aerosmith came and jammed with Kiss, or had you or were you gone by no, then? No, I, I I wasn't at that show, but that was you in know. your tenure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean that was that was cool. That was unexpected. Yeah. Well, it was expected because Aerosmith was touring, but it was sort of not expected at Well, the it's same not time. expected because Kiss has never been one of those bands to do jams on stage. And Aerosmith has people come on their stage. They don't normally go to others. So that was a great moment. In yeah. Both no, I mean, that, that, that's, I hope that in jam, you're right. I hope it includes Ace and Peter and bring up Bruce and anybody else. But I hope it includes some other people that are really like, wow. Well, it will. <laughs> I mean, generally at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, everybody who's been nominated will come out and sort of jam a song together. Paul oh, Jones doing yeah. rock and roll all night. 
yeah, Rock and Roll Night is the one that you, that is the obvious choice. So, of course, I'd love to see Cat Stevens standing on stage with them. I love Cat Stevens. And, you know, who else is going in? Is it um, Linda Ronstadt? I've heard she's not going to be there because she, she doesn't not, feel well. Yeah. How about if Axl Rose shows up? Because, you know, Paul no. was called in. To I hate him. No. I hate, no. Oh. Yuck. No. Yuck. Uh-uh. I no. I'm talking about people that that they kiss, looked up to, growing up. So cream. Roger Daltrey of the Who. Yeah, there the Who, uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, any of those British bands that all of them seem to love, or Zeppelin or whomever. Slade. Slade would be cool. Slade or, would. Be or cool. with the Gene connection, Eddie Van Halen and David Lee Roth. That would be cool. Yeah. I, I wouldn't expect that. That would yeah, be I kind can. of a cool... And, and remember, back in 75 or 74, uh, Van Halen used to cover Rock and Roll All Night as part of their show. I just can't see Roth ever getting up on stage with them. But that's what would make it cool. And right. Eddie, because of the connection where he played on the Love Gun demos, like there's that whole sort of incestuous kind of background family relation that would make... Not that incest is cool, but you know, you know what I mean. You know what Relatively I mean. speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. But you know what I mean. There you Jesus go. E Eddie showing up. Eddie and Ace jamming together. That could be interesting. I I I vote for people like the Who, Rolling Stones. And, and a last thought on, on the Eddie my... thing. Just remember when Van Halen was inducted, Eddie and David didn't show up. So that would make it sort of like, ah, they finally showed up themselves to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that adds a little extra twist. God, I'm brilliant. Gotta tell you. It ain't easy coming up with this stuff. Let me write yes. that down. Dear Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Please I'm brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm brilliant. Please hire uh, David Lee Roth. Yeah. yeah, see? All right, well, see, I, I figured it all out. Maybe I'll have to tweet that to Paul tonight. So you can call me a... Never mind. Why don't you tweet Paul and ask him who would he love to jam with at the Hall of Fame? Ooh. Mm -hmm. good, that, actually, I, that actually might uh, elicit a response. Mm-hmm. Go for it. You should say, who would you like to jam with, known or unknown, at the Hall of Fame? Outside of KISS. I mean, I, I don't want to say, oh, Ace or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's it. I'll do that. Why not? How about Jeff Lynn? From Yellow? Doesn't doesn't fit for me. Ringo, Ringo Starr on drums? But, but it goes back to the move, and that's kind of some early influence to Paul. Yeah, I guess I'd have a hard time making the connection. I just, and, and he doesn't, I don't know. I mean, ELO is a good band and all that, so I'm not saying it. It's just, I, I'm sticking with the original ones with The Who and... Um, the Beatles, Stones, any of those guys, Cream, you know, Humble Pie. Yeah. Maybe Humble even, Pie. yeah, you know, so that Paul type of Rogers. stuff. Paul Rogers. Paul Rogers, yes. Oh, the, um, the guy from the Raspberries. Eric Carmen. Yeah. I thought I was, was under the impression he did not like them. Paul? No. Like that, him, Eric didn't like Kiss. Eric didn't like Kiss. I don't know. I'm under the impression that if he showed up on stage, I'd be going, who the fuck's that? Why is he, well, that's the other why part is he standing of it. on the stage with Kiss? Well, but we don't care about that. Mitch would only know if it's like the Bullet Boys or Anthrax. <laughs> <laughs> there. No, David Lee Roth, that's, that's the way to go. David and Eddie, there you go. And Anton Fig. Mitch LaFon. Yeah. Mitch could stand off to the side of the stage and what sing I an find angle. amazing is that Kiss played the NHL thing and then they flew out to the Maui Rock and Brews opening and my invitations keep getting lost. I mean, what is with Canada Post and USPS? I don't think they got lost. I don't think they were ever sent. And that's what the letter is oh. for. They were sent. Of course they were sent. They just keep getting lost. It's been 40 That's years of bad for. postal service. It's, it's, it's terrible. All right. Let's, um, <sighs> let's, let's do a little silence here in, in 
memory of something that Mitch has done. Well, wait a minute. Do you want me to do the comment or not? Do you want to do that before or after we get shocked? Either way. You, 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 Mitch, what do you want to do? You want to go first? No, no. Go ahead. All right. Talk okay. to me, Tommy. Well, this one um, Does he seems have theme to be... music? No. no. Nobody's no. ever given us theme music for Tommy's Talk to Me. We have a reoccurring theme here that was asked in several different places, so I'm just going to take this off the YouTube site from John Graves. And this goes back to our um, show from last week when we were talking with Chris. How is it a breach of contract if Ace was out of the band? I don't understand. And what he's referring to is Chris had mentioned that if Ace leaves the group, that they would be in breach of contract and could lose their record contract and would have to renegotiate. I, I, I that that that's what he's referring to. I think he might have understood that as Ace was in breach of contract with Kiss. No, and and that's not the point. No, it's the contract Kiss had with the record label, saying three of the four original members Ace, had to. Ace was a signee on that contract. He left the band. That contract is no longer valid. And what ended up happening is the label used that as a reason to renegotiate the contract with KISS right, and make a more favorable contract to the label. Which means less money for Gene and Paul, which could explain why they might have been bitter. Yeah. And by the way, I think this, if I'm, you correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but in 2003 on the World Domination Tour with Aerosmith, it was the same kind of thing. They had to have three original members or basically no tour. Well, I think that's what Peter actually wrote in his book oh, that's was right. the the I'd heard that when I was working with him, but I had never had proof of it. But Peter said in his book that that tour promoters required three of the four originals. The desire was to get Ace. Right. When Ace didn't sign on, they got Peter, and they went out like that. Yeah, and that and that's yeah. normal in in the business where pretty much any band where there's a certain cachet in having more original members, you know, they'll do that. Or, you know, it, it could be something that's called, like, the key man clause. You know, this guy has to be in the band, and if this guy's not in the band, the contract is null and void. Yeah, I, I would it, imagine that, that Kiss might have a key man clause with Paul Stanley. If Ace was there and Peter was there and Gene was there, but there was no Paul... The record company might say you're in default. I could see that. I don't I'm know sure, if that's true. I, don't, but I, could I see would that. think I would see Gene and Paul both being at that level. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either of them left. That contract's not valid. Yep. Yeah. Probably. Anyway, listen. So, uh, let, let's just state that we're over. guessing. We don't. We don't know. I haven't seen the contracts. I'm going off of what Peter wrote in his book. And that was my understanding of the way Chris explained it. So I just thought it was worth bringing up, not that we're giving legal advice or saying that we know for sure, but that's how I understood it because several people asked that same question. Yeah. yeah. Now, now as an educated guess. Um, mm -hmm. As you said, last week was our Chris Lent interview. The early response has been really positive. Yeah. Well, it was a good interview. And, and we got to roll up and do a part two and a part three. Not necessarily in the next couple of weeks, but you know, but by the time we get to 2015, I wouldn't mind having three Chris Lesson interviews. I wouldn't. Okay. I'm already pulling together some questions to mm -hmm. talk to him about the 80s kiss. Yep. Yeah, and, and I would definitely think that part two would have to be 83 to 87 or 89 just because... 88, I think, is when he left. Yeah, because the 70s are very well documented. You know, when you look at Peter's book and Ace's book and Gene's book and all, there, there's, a, there's a history of the 70s. The 80s is, is this big void. So yep. I, I would like to get more into that, quite frankly. And we will. Yeah. Okay, so are we doing um, shockers? Mitch, quiet. Can you count to 15 Vancouver's? Mitch, that's the name. I think we're good. See? See? Look at that. All right. Listen. Oh. E. Oh. 
I got this because I know how many how much fans love them. Look at this. I'd say is that a pillow? It's a it's a it's a pillowcase. All right. Where is your drool on that pillowcase? Well, <laughs> this is where it gets good. <laughs> you know, when I when I when I have, <laughs> I don't know if we want to go here, Tommy. I don't. When I have back problems, I was told to keep this uh, pillow under my legs so I can sleep. Sort of, you know. So so this is the pillow that goes under the knees. So. Technically, either this part or this part, depending on the night, is the part that's right up against my naked ass. So, uh, yeah, it's not really drool. Air, I, Aaron, can't, I, can't, I cannot take that picture out of my head now. I'm sorry, everybody who's listening and watching this. So, th there might Aaron's, be, like, extra hair over here. Oh, jeez, <laughs> it works. <laughs> or, or extra hair. Like, they might have hairy feet sometimes. I really don't know, but this this is a a, a pillowcase that that came from Asia, actually. Tommy, can and, I can I get permission to just take this straight completely into the gutter as far as it can go? Oh, absolutely! But before you say it, can I say one thing? Aaron Let me Spicer. Sniff it for you. <sighs> what? <laughs> Aaron I'm just Spicer. Trying to figure wrote, out what part I slept on last night. No, hear the <laughs> Aaron Spicer said. <laughs> Mitch, don't think out loud again. <laughs> I know, I saw that. <laughs> I'm referring to what we thought was going to be mailed to you. Um, so here. Oh, the anal uh, problem? Where, 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 oh, where are the skid marks, Mitch? Oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> it's hard to say they're wearing black, but... <sighs> you, listen, you can't make this stuff up. You can't pay for oh. quality like this. This is quality entertainment. At least I YouTube. Wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize it as such, but whatever. If this doesn't go viral, then I give up. <laughs> no, that pillow is viral already. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, Who could make a pillowcase as funny? There's only me. It's a talent. Uh, a funny, talent. Not funny scary, word. disgusting, disturbing, limited, disturbing. Oh, 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 I, 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 one more comment. One more comment. Okay, let him have it. Where on that pillow would we find the Mitchgasm? <laughs> <laughs> it really depends how big the Kleenex was and what missed. I mean. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's hard to say. This is not scripted, people. <laughs> Not scripted. Oh, I'm out of Vaseline for Christ's sake. Damn it. Oh. I don't know what to say. Tommy's from Minnesota. This offends him. Uh, no, I no. just. It's this the should mental. Offend anybody from any state. Not it's the Minnesota. visual. I just am like, oh. Speaking of Minnesota, I just saw that they had like 10,000 people ice fishing and the biggest fish would get a Jeep or something. What the hell's wrong with you people? I don't know. I don't ice fish. Yeah, I don't. I did that a couple times and said this is for nuts. But you know about well, the big Minnesota event where everybody shows up. Oh, they have all? plenty. They have more than one of those. Yeah. Oh. But I did they, see in a YouTube why? video more than where one. someone pulled out like a three-foot um, northern. I mean, it was It's like, wow. Really? So people like that. But a lot of the people I know that ice fish don't oh, ever actually cut a hole. the name of somebody you know. They just go out in the middle of the lake and drink. Yeah, they drink beer until they have eat, enough cases to make furniture. Eat chili, drink. Mm -hmm. And they have a satellite system. They watch football. Oh, there's literally little... Mille Lacs is the big yep. lake. There's literally mm. pop-up towns that build out onto the lake in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Roads, towns, streets... That's Fishermen live out there. Well, listen, in Montreal or in... Montreal area, we do have an ice bridge, which obviously is only during the winter, and it's just the lake freezes over, and people can drive to work quicker because it connects two banks. And it's like, okay, not sure I would trust an ice bridge, quite frankly, but yeah. I'm go. still, I'm still in shock. Well, it's a shocker. 
Mitch. Da, 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 da. Mitch. Hey, I want to give a shout out to um, another one of our uh, fans, listeners who donated. Um, Dustin. I'll just say his name. Dustin just uh, donated twenty five dollars. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you very much, Dustin. We're gonna After call today. Up. We're really gonna need it. That's yeah, fifty dollars. One more donation, and we can buy a Vinny shirt. Somebody did say they want to help cover your costs to buy sunscreen for the cruise. The cruise, yeah. <laughs> oh, the cruise. It's funny because I was watching yesterday the uh, what is it, Princess Something Cruise. That's from New Jersey where there's 600 people with gastrointestinitis, whatever. I'm like, ah, that would be fun if I could go on a cruise and get a novo virus. Yeah. Another reason to stay wouldn't home. It, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be great to be caught on a boat with like 3,000 other KISS fans who all, all have puking? the puking? No, oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> be lying in sick bay next to Gene. Ugh. Gene. This is why... Boats are just, ugh. but right. listen, maybe I'll go. Who knows? I'll try. Actually, you know what? Let me do one more shout out for a donation. This guy's been made four donations since last October. The guy's name, according to PayPal, is Wizard Butt. Wizard Butt? Vinny. Wizard <laughs> Butt. Thank you, Vinny, for the donation. We <laughs> appreciate it. He's donated every month since October. Thank On you. On the Creatures Tour, what would most men see backstage? Wizard butt. Hello, Vinny. Come on. Hi, hi, hi. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Um, okay. Oh, there was no phone call this week? No, just not. With all the technical crap we've been dealing with, we'll, we'll catch up and... We'll do a couple extra long phone calls next time. Yeah, okay. I mean, what, what folks should understand is that it is almost 6 o'clock at night, my time. We started at 4 o'clock, and of course, you don't have a two-hour show to listen to, and that's because Skype has been magical today. Sucks today. Yeah. Absolutely Pra-pra- magical. Crapped out three-quarters of the way through the show. And luckily, we now have three redundancies in the, in the recording, so at least we don't have to redo but yes. you get to experience it all as it happened. Absolutely. Um, so leave us reviews on iTunes dot three sides of the coin dot com, Spreaker dot three sides of the coin dot com, iHeartRadio dot three sides of the coin dot com. Uh, leave your comments over on Facebook slash three sides of the coin. Three sides of the coin dot com is our website. You can find us. We're everywhere. And let me ask you a couple of things quickly on that. Fans have always, they go to my Facebook page and say, I can't download on Spreaker. Which, which of these platforms can you download and which ones can't you? Like, can you download the show from Spreaker? Or is it just- Yes, you can download from Spreaker okay. and iTunes. I don't know about all of the others. Are the other ones, uh, is like TuneIn just streaming or can streaming. you? Streaming. It's stream. TuneIn is streaming. I think Stitcher is streaming. Okay. Um, but they have their I, own apps that you can put on your phones yeah, and stuff. Okay. Yeah. iHeartRadio, I believe, is just streaming. Yeah, because that's more like a radio station. It's yep. essentially like having a radio station in your pocket. Yep. Okay. And uh, obviously, YouTube is is streaming. Streaming video. Okay. Okay, but Spreaker they can download, and yes. they can okay. Okay. At least I checked that it should be downloadable. I've never tried it, so I guess if somebody's trying to download it and it doesn't work, please come back and let us know, but it should be downloadable on Spreaker. Okay, good. I just want to clear that up, because I see that question coming up over and over again, like from week to week. And Okay, good. That's it. That, it? that seems to be it. it. All right. Our call, hope. Until next week. Until, until we figure week. out what we talk about next week. Well, we've got some guests coming up soon, so there you go. All right. Later, guys. Bye.